Hello everybody and welcome to Sin City Living. My name is Jason. I'll be bringing you today's episode. Now, most of the updates and things for the channel we're putting at the end of each video so that uh, people can skip right through it, uh, skip right to it and, and uh, hear about it or just not watch that portion at all. But a couple of things that I do want to bring up uh, real fast doing a couple of small changes to what we're doing here. Um, kind of going back to the roots, going back to the basics. And uh, what, I'm, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the strategies. And please email us any strategies you would like us to shoot videos on, even if it's ones we've already done in the past, over the past year, year and a half. I can't go through all of our videos and dredge up all of the strategies so I can remember them all. So please, please, please email them to us. And this is how I'm going to do it. Each one is going to be a series of videos. Um, I'm going to do the initial video where I will present the strategy, go over it, analyze it, talk a little bit about the strategy, some of its strengths, some of its weaknesses. And um, then I will shoot a, another video or a series of videos. It's going to be two or three videos of, uh, of how it stacks up on the statistical likelihood rolls. 15 rolls without a 7, 30 rolls without a 7, 45, and 60. How... Uh, um, how it would stack up on basically 10 to hour and a, 10 minute to hour and a half long rolls and that will be split up into two sometimes maybe three videos depending on how long it takes um, and then after that I will shoot another video where we will do that particular strategy under some live rolls now the live roll strategies those or the live roll videos those are going to be going on the patron site for our patrons but the other three to four videos will be on our uh, uh, regular YouTube channel. After that, I'm going to stitch all of them together, except for the live roll, but I'll stitch all the rest of them together into one long video for our, uh, our daily premiere where everyone is able to chat with each other and amongst themselves. Um, hasn't quite gone the way I was hoping it would go, but one unexpected uh, bonus to it is that I have noticed that there's been uh, been a lot of chat going on between the fans so I'd like to continue that keep that going so we'll continue doing these these uh, premiere videos so that everybody can can uh, chat with each other and I go through the I go through the chats and uh, get ideas for videos and, and stuff like that because while I'm doing these strategy series I'm still gonna have the other videos in between plus crossfires and stuff like that when I can get Louie Thank you, by the way, to West and I believe it was East Coast Crafts for the support on today's premiere. Uh, we really, really appreciate that. It's going to be uh, very helpful for us to continue growing the channel. And thank you also to everybody for the coffees. Very appreciated. Very, very appreciated. I am living on coffee right now. With all of that being said, sorry for how long it took, we're going to go ahead and jump into today's video. Welcome everybody and today it's number three on how to make the game great for everybody. Video one was on how dealers can uh, make the game a great experience for everybody. Video two was on how the players can, things to avoid. And uh, this time we're going to talk about, and I know these are a little bit wordy, they're, they're less action oriented, but it uh, um, was a suggestion of one of our viewers. In this one we're going to talk about how the, the, the players and the dealers can work together to make sure that the game is, is is enjoyable for everybody. Now the first thing is just like I mentioned in uh, in the other videos is the biggest thing, don't be a jerk. Don't be a jerk. There's absolutely no no need or reason to be a jerk and again, you know, players should should remember that um, they shouldn't act any differently than they would than they would accept people acting at their place of work when uh, when they come in. So outside of that, the biggest thing with the players and the dealers is a communication thing. As long as the players and the dealers are communicating with each other, it makes the game flow smooth and it makes it, again, more enjoyable for everybody else around. One of the things that can really disturb other players are when a player, especially a player next to them, and a dealer either start arguing or, or um, even get... Um, I guess at at cross purposes, um, you know. The one of the things that I see a lot. And this goes back to again, know your bets as well. Know what you're betting. I see players that will do a come bet because they saw somebody else do a come bet. So then the number rolls, and the dealer travels it, and they say, "How many odds would you like?" 
and the player just stares at them like they just grew a third eye. And the dealer says, you know, you've got a combat. How many odds would you like? Would you like to be down with odds? Would you like 10 odds, 15 odds, 25 odds? What would you like? They're actually waiting to pay it because they need to know if they need to cut out a green or not. And the player, again, just stares directly at them, which, at which point then the, the dealer is much more likely to say, okay, no odds, and they're going to go ahead and take it down. But it's got every other, it draws the eye of every other player, and it makes the next player who's waiting on their payout, maybe they've got, maybe they're, they're a player here, maybe they, they were even the come better that got, that got uh, copied. So now they have one, and they're just waiting. They're, they're getting impatient, and, and they're waiting, and, and it definitely hurts the, uh, the experience for, for them with the player and the dealer not being able to smoothly handle their bets. You know, and that also comes down a little bit on the dealer. Especially on a busy game, dealers will become a little bit less communicative and more likely to to be almost impatient. You know, what would you like? How many odds? How many odds? How many odds? Okay, same bet. And and they, or down with no odds. They're impatient instead of, you know, hey, how many odds would you like? And when the when the player gives us that blank look, the dealer is to say a come bet is just like a pass line bet, so you can do you can do odds. Or the other thing is you make a suggestion. When the player doesn't really know what's going on, they'll generally go with the suggestion. And a bad dealer or mid mid level dealer, a dealer that actually will make a suggestion but isn't a particularly nice dealer, I would say, will suggest something like max odds or or, or big odds. You know, something like um, you know, if you're on a three, four, five table, max would be fifty here. They don't have fifty to work with, so they may say, You want you want a quarter odds? Because they know the player's likely to go ahead and just 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 nod their head and just just accept whatever the dealer says. Whereas a nice dealer, if the player doesn't really know what they're doing, a nice dealer should actually suggest minimum odds. You know, so if we have a ten dollar combat that travels and you know, hey, would you like any odds? Any odds for you? How about ten odds? Ten odds gonna work for you? And they'll even with if the player doesn't say anything, they'll set it up and go, is that good? Is that okay? At that point the player's likely to go ahead and just nod their head. There's no reason to suggest max odds. A lot of dealers will do that, max odds or something big. There's absolutely no reason to suggest that. If they don't know what they're doing, they don't know what the bet is, they're not likely to want to risk their entire bankroll or, or such on the bet. They, they're going to want to stay at a fairly small level. So, you know, keep that, keep that down there, keep that low, keep that careful. Um, another thing is is uh, the players and the dealers, as they communicate to each other, like we say, don't be a jerk, and that applies to both sides. You know, keep it friendly, keep it friendly. You know, and for the players, wait your turn, and for the dealers, educate your players, don't yell at your players. Now, if you have, have coached somebody three or four times on the same thing, then there becomes a certain point where you start to get a little bit, I guess, rougher with what you're saying, and a little bit more direct, but at first, you just educate your players. When you've got that player saying, hey, pay me, pay me, pay me, pay me, pay me, hold on, We're, we'll get to you, we pay in a certain order, we'll get to you as soon as we can, as soon as it's your turn, we'll go ahead and get to you. You know, now if the player does know what they're doing and they're acting like they're the only player on the table, now they're disrupting every other player and they're disrupting the dealer and slowing their payouts down. They're talking over the player whose turn it is, who's trying to make their press moves or, or odds or any other additional bets or changes to their bets. Um, so at that point, yes, they're disrupting everybody. But a lot of people just don't know or are very, very caught up within their own bets. There's, there's a lot of people that seem to think they're the only player on the table or they're just so excited. And that's the other thing too, they get excited. You know, a great example is someone's got a hard eight. Someone has a hard eight and the eight rolls, they're sitting, they've got a hard eight, pay me, I've got the hard eight, don't forget, I've got the hard eight, I've got the hard eight. That is literally the last thing that we are going to deal with. We're gonna deal with all the come bets and any don't comes. Then we're gonna deal with all the place bets and odds then once we have finished this, then we move on to center action. And even then we go in a specific order. So, you know, some players are, hey, pay me, I had that hard eight, I had the hard eight. And, and it starts to irritate the dealers because the dealers are short on patience, which they should not be. Got to be very, very patient with your players, especially the new ones that just don't understand. Be patient with them, educate them, you know, hey, I got gotcha. you. We're going to pay you in just a second. We actually deal with all these bets first, then we get to those bets. So we'll, we'll get you. Don't worry. We didn't forget about you. And that, that settles them. That settles them right down, makes them happy. They know they're getting paid. They know they've got that bet. Um, another one that, uh, 
is is helpful between the dealers and the players is because it's a fast moving game we always say you know pay attention to your bets pay attention to the game it's a very very quick moving game but what we can have a lot of times too so like when you get a payout on a combat you know you need to pick it up as quickly as you can need to pay attention but sometimes you have a lot of players especially on this side the thing is with the table the long side over here holds four spots then the short side over here is also four spots so it gets very very cramped for those four especially when you get to come bets so one the players should be paying attention should be watching their bets and two the dealer should be communicating when the dealers are getting to these come bets and they are paying them what they should do, what a good dealer does, is they cut it out and they will either say, that's yours, they'll point and say, that's yours, or they'll actually go a little bit outside of procedure and they hand it off. Now, that's not, again, that's not the perfect procedure for it, handing it off, but it is an excellent customer service thing, so you drop it off and then hand off the bet. That way, you don't have people wondering, is that my bet? Is that my bet? Is that my bet? Whose bet is that? Because they all kind of go in the same spot, especially when, when you're paying them. Uh, so a good dealer hand them off the thing is you we so many dealers get so caught up in the the um, the strict rules of procedures and they don't really understand that you can go beyond that procedure says I leave come bets out here I pay them and leave them out there and it's up to the deal up to the player to collect their money that's procedure there's nothing that says I can't hand it off, and a good dealer should hand it off most of the time when they can. Um, the same thing for the field. The field, the way I look at it is to, to the dealer, the field is fire and forget. It's, it's uh, a player control bet. It's a self-service bet, which means the player puts it on down, the player picks it on up. Dealers either collect it on a loser or pay it, and then they forget about it, they're moving on. But a good dealer is always watching their layout so they know who put what bets down. It's very frustrating when I see a player say, when I, we've got a whole bunch, because especially because you get these superstitious players that are reaching across three other people's bets because they want to put their bet on the nine, and they want to put their bet on the two, but they're all the way over there. But then the player here, 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 and here who put their bets in front of them, now they're like, whose bet is what, where? Instead of putting your bet in the same spot every time and directly in front of you, they, put, they spread them all over. Well, a good dealer is still watching their layout and should be able to say, no, that's your bet right there. That's your bet right there. I have actually paid out and handed off field bets in the past. does not mean that I, don't, that I don't leave them out there in the field most of the time because I do. But there's been a few times where I have paid it and handed it off to prevent any kind of confusion because that just stops the game. It stops the game and that, that's no fun for anybody, player or dealer. Same thing with the don't come. With the don't come, the dealer... A lot, of, a lot of dealers will, will pay from behind and then they will just drop it off into the don't come. And the theory behind that is, well, we don't hand off come bets by procedure, so why would we hand off don't come bets? A lot of schools, a lot of, a lot of uh, dealing schools will teach you to hand don't comes off to the players. And a good dealer will hand don't comes off to the players. However, a good player will not play the don't come from over there. Unless the table is completely full. If the table is completely full, you have no place else to be. But if you're playing the don't come, you should be able to reach it because the don't come is, again, a self-service bet. Self-service bet. One of the fastest ways to irritate the dealers is to be over there and say, that's in the don't come. No, that's in the come. If you want it in the don't come, you need to put it in the don't come because that's a self-service betting area. You leave it out here to the cameras and everybody else, you place it in the come. Of course, the dealer will move it over, and especially if the table is full. And uh, that concludes this series of three videos. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We will catch you guys next time. Bye now. Thank you, everybody, for watching today's video. And as promised, a little bit more detail on things that we are working on. So, again, we want to, uh, we want to continue trying to expand the channel. We're really hoping to be, add, to be able to add roulette as soon as possible. And then some video kino, video slots, stuff along those lines. Um, Unfortunately, it ate up almost all of our cash, um, paying off all of our bills during the month of January, January while we were down. And uh, now that the holidays have ended, um, YouTube's uh, payouts have dropped significantly. So uh, we're kind of treading water here, uh, 
uh, as far as all that goes. Do have a lot of things we want to add, though. Not just those those things, those those additional games, and hopefully some carnival games and such such like that. But the live streams. The biggest problem right now with the live streams is with three jobs combined between the two of us. Four, if I include the the 20 to 30 hours a week I'm putting into the YouTube channel. Um, it's very, very difficult for me to have a day and time that I can commit to doing the live stream every single week because we also have our, our very young child to, to take care of. But I'm trying to figure that out. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably going to end up being on, on Monday nights or Tuesday afternoons or possibly both. I intend to do at least one live stream exclusively for our patrons and then another one on the YouTube channel. So possibly both, both days. Um, we also have a few other things that, that we really want to attempt to move forward on. I'm just running into to either time or skill set issues. I do want to eventually have a, a website going for us. Um, I did used to program websites a long, over a decade ago. A lot of things have changed and I just don't have that time. Um, and uh, not a whole lot of knowledge on the current state of, of um, building websites, hosting site, you know, what, what sites can host and, and uh, uh, how to build up, you know, the e-commerce stuff. So if anybody has any skill sets along those lines and would like to answer some questions uh, or just help us out, shoot us an email, sincitylivinglv at gmail.com. Um, also, I really hope to be able to start adding some, some uh, fairly, ex some exclusive stuff from Sin City Living, uh, logoed shirts, hats. I'm looking to get uh, custom dice made, even custom custom layouts made, although those would be pretty expensive. Um, but I know zero about e-commerce and drop shipping and uh, anything along those lines. So if you have any skill or knowledge in that area, please email me. Uh, I, would, I would love to ask you some questions and uh, see, if, uh, see if you can answer, answer a few to help me figure out how to get that going. Um, same thing with uh, with designing our logos. You know, I, I I had the logo had some logos designed, very very small logos, unfortunately, not big enough to blow up to put on T-shirts and stuff like that. And again, I know next to nothing. Not next to I know nothing about um, logo design, graphic design, any kind of websites that could that could do it. Um, I I literally know nothing. So if you have any skill or knowledge in that area, also please email me, and you're willing to ask, answer some questions. Please. Email me and uh, and let me know. I uh, uh, I'll admit I don't even know where to start as far as asking some questions, but I'm sure I'll, I'll ask a few and that'll trigger a few more, so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, there's that, and and uh, of course we do hope to continue to improve our AV setup. But I am an AV moron, so also right there, if you have any skill sets or knowledge in that area please email me and, and are willing to answer some questions, please email me and, uh, and let me know. We would love the help. Uh, otherwise, again, thank you everybody for watching and we're very excited to continue bringing you our videos. Bye now.